Hello subscribers and non-subscribers <clears throat> and welcome back to Chaos Head. So yeah, sorry last week didn't have any uh, audio for me because Windows decided to, for some stupid reason, mess with my audio settings I presume after an update. Um, I did check and make sure after, or not after, but uh, right before recording this that my microphone was no longer set as being muted. So. We should be fine, but we're going to go ahead and hop into the game again real quick, but I'm just going to go ahead and make sure one last time that Windows hasn't screwed with anything. So, one sec. Okay, yeah, everything was fine. The only thing that was different was that uh, my audio output recording was set as system default rather than specifically my headset, but my headset is system default anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But uh, let's go ahead and continue on. Countless students had collapsed, their eyes rolled back, and they foamed at the mouth, and their body- Wait, what? How the hell did we get to this? Uh, I, I feel as though we skipped something. I really do. I don't know why. It does not feel as though this is lined up properly. Oh well. A number of others had curled into balls, pressing down on their heads as if they were suffering. The remaining students had stood up, though they were supposed to be in the middle of classes, and were filing out into the hallway. The teacher took no notice of them as he frantically attempted to help the fallen students. Everyone who had come out of their hall or in, out into the hallway was raising su surprised voices, but none of their words entered you his head. The cell phone in her skirt pocket had been vibrating for some time now. Upon noticing it at last, she dragged her hand toward her pocket. She tried to stand up, but she staggered and slid down past her chair. Crouching, she leaned back against the wall. After correcting the position of her slipping glasses, she pressed a button to take the call and put her phone to her ear. Hi. Oh. Hi. You made a grimace and pressed at her forehead as she answered, but the commotion of her classmates in the hallway and her teacher's voice as he called, hey, hold on, to his prostrate students sounded to her like something taking place very far away. Um, blanching, I guess. You a gulped. She covered her, or she covered the phone with her hands and dropped her voice. Her tone was clearly unsettled. Having said that much, she was fumbled with her words and hung her head. The racket from the corridor grew louder still. Everyone was looking in the same direction and pointing and wearing anxious expressions. The hallway windows rattled as if a strong wind were blowing against them. Feebly bowing her head at the end as though the person she was speaking to right in front of her, you would cut the connection. And she raised her head, casting a glance at the windows beyond which everyone was pointing. It was almost as if someone had dropped white paint into water. The sky that had been a dirty blue was fading to white. The white spread at considerable speed, blurring it invaded its way through the sky. Under ordinary circumstances, being released from a long investigatory headquarters meeting would have left Ba and Yasuji feeling refreshed. But that certainly couldn't be said of today, when he felt the other detectives and or when he left the other detectives and went up to the windowsill 
to irritatingly place a call to his junior. His partner, Sua, hadn't shown up at today's investigation meeting. Ben's personal feeling about it was, sure, even I want to skip, but what are you thinking abandoning your senior like this? At first glance, Sua seemed like a frivolous sort of man, but in reality he was a serious detective with some real backbone to him, considering how Ben valued him, his ditching the meeting today came unexpectedly. Ben had tried to contact him countless times, but he also or but he always ended up getting his voicemail. What with having heard something rather disturbing from Momose two days ago, Ben was having a hard time settling down. Today was full of annoyance after annoyance. Aside from the thing about Sua, there was also the fact that when he reported about the GE raid in the meeting earlier, Matsunaga shot him down with, We don't have time to deal with idle gossip. Please, don't let things get any more aggravating than this. Ben let out a small sigh as he waved his fan at his face. When he, er, which was when his call went through and he heard his junior's voice. The connection was terribly low quality. Ben scratched his short hair, wondering where in the boondock Sue had gone off to. When Ben yelled, Sue's voice grew inaudible, and for some time, rustling noises continued in exchange. You couldn't praise Sua for taking unauthorized independent action. Since Ban himself was constantly taking unauthorized independent action, however, he couldn't help smiling dryly at the thought that maybe all their time together had led to him having a bad influence on Sua, his junior. The color in Ban's eyes shifted. Stop hitting right mouse button accidentally when I rest my finger. Right then, the area at his feet began shaking. The shaking gradually grew fiercer and fiercer to the point that he couldn't stand up straight. Ben crouched in place without a moment's hesitation. The other detectives, who had first been unfazed, finally picked up on the gravity of the situation and ducked down or wormed their way under tables. The clock hanging on the wall, the pens and paper cups set on the table, the projection equipment, they dropped to the floor one after the other, sending up violent crashing noises. The two whiteboards lined up at the head of the conference room also collapsed. It was almost like being in a plane that had just entered turbulence. So it seemed to Bon. It felt as if his feet weren't meeting the ground. His entire body rocked, sending him swinging around from side to side. This could conceivably be a 5 or 6 magnitude earthquake. Had the Great Kanto Earthquake arrived at last, now of all times? That was when something slammed into Bond's head, he cried out at once. It wasn't that someone had physically struck him, it was an intense headache. <laughs> Suddenly, screams resounded through the conference room. Gritting his teeth, Bond raised his head to see one of the uh, jurisdictional detectives holding his head in his arms and writhing. And then he flopped over powerlessly like a puppet. Most of the other detectives' faces were contorted with pain, and they were pressing down on their temples or cradling their heads. What was this headache that matched nothing he had ever experienced before? Ben had no way of knowing whether or not it was connected to the earthquake. The shaking finally started to dissipate. Ben looked through the window with foggy eyes. 
it overflowed with milky white light. The brilliance of it prevented him from keeping his eyes open. Assaulted by head splitting pain, I opened my eyes. I realized I lay collapsed face down in the middle of my room. I tried to get up, but as soon as I did, pain raced through me as if my headache had infected the rest of my body, and I immediately moaned and borderline fainted in agony. After about five minutes worth of writhing around when the pain had started to subdue minutely, I grabbed one of the legs of my bed to pull myself up. I used a Hand swiped the greasy sweat off my forehead. The room was in a disastrous state, as if a storm had passed through it. All of my brides, who had been lined up on their shelf, were now toppled over or had fallen to the floor. The bed was tilted, and the manga volumes and arrogate packages piled up on it had been, or had come tumbling down, scattering across the floor. What the hell had happened? If I remember correctly, someone had called me. Let me pass had played through the phone, but and as before, it had transformed into something like an ambulance siren by the end. <laughs> right, I'd heard the ground roar at the same time that the buzzer sounded, and immediately afterward I'd been consumed by the sensation that my entire body was boiling and melting. I had absolutely no memory of whatever came next. My mind went blank. It couldn't be. Electromagnetic attack by Shogun? Maybe Shogun was capable of carrying out the same sorts of things as the system described in the patent I'd found earlier. Such thoughts made me shudder. And during my headache, I looked up at the ceiling. I didn't see anything there, of course. If he were recording my thoughts, it'd be from a satellite's distant upper atmosphere orbit. <laughs> But judging by Senna's tone when she told me all those things, it almost sounded like the system in that patent had already been put into actual use and was being abused by certain people. If one of those certain people was Shogun, no, that's impossible. Whatever the case, it was way too much of a logical leap. An old man who looked like he might keel over any moment or any minute couldn't have pr private access to an orbital satellite, or did it mean he had to be one of the key people in some kind of governmental project? Scaring myself my own delusions wouldn't change anything. It was the fact that something had occurred, so I figured I would look it up online. I crawled up to my PC, my head throbbing. I was positive I left it on, which meant it wouldn't make any sense if my Sarah screensaver weren't being displayed on the monitor, but the screen was pitch black. I hadn't set it to automatically enter standby on its own, so it shouldn't have entered up, ended up like this, but... My consciousness was clouded and my body remained a limp. It was a struggle just to stand. Clenching my teeth to put up with it, I moved the mouse. No reaction. Next, I tried pressing the power button. The hard disk started making a crunching sound. I popped myself deep into my chair as I waited for the PC to start up. I reached urgently for my cell phone, which still sat where I had left it on the table. I checked the time. Before I received that phone... Uh, before I received that phone call while I was browsing through info about ISA on that channel, what time had it been again? Um, um, when I put my head to work, the stabbing pain grew harsher. What time had it been? Think. Remember. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it shouldn't have been noon yet. Which meant... Or else, like a sleepwalker, I'd been drifting around somewhere for an hour? I shook my head to keep my thoughts from sinking in a negative direction again. The resulting pang made my field of sight waver dizzily. It was as if a lump of lead had been stuffed into the center of my head. When I took a glance at the monitor... Oi, 
Could this possibly be a hard disk error? My gigs of 18 plus Moe artwork. Only 18? <laughs> my Aragay saved data, my bookmarks to the sites I made the rounds of on a daily basis, my minimum attendance shift chart, and more than anything, that which was more important to me than anything, my Ensu save data. Um, I, wait, is Ensu not an MMO? Because it definitely sounds like they described it as an MMO earlier. In which case, you don't have any save data on your PC. All you gotta do is reinstall it and voila, you've got your character back. Unless for some stupid reason all that's saved on your local PC, which would be stupid. Does this mean that anything and everything had vanished? I wanted to scream and cry in frustration. I wanted to bang at the keyboard. I wanted to kick the wall, and even now, I wanted to make sure of whether or not a restoration was possible. But my body felt as heavy as always, and my headache wouldn't recede, and it was all I could do simply to sit limply in my chair and bite my lip. It was over. My life was over. The deletion of my Ansu data meant I no longer had any reason to live. Everything stopped mattering to me, and it all burned away. But again, the way they described Ensu, it sounded like it's an MMO, not a RPG that you just play on your PC. Like, I guess Final Fantasy or something. They didn't describe it as that. <laughs> they definitely described grouping up with other players earlier. Which makes me say MMO. Which makes me say the guy's an idiot. <laughs> or when they made this, they didn't quite understand the concept that MMOs store character data and stuff generally on the company servers or on the game servers. Sarah, lying fallen over on my desk, smiled like an angel and spoke to me gently. <laughs> Okay, seems I definitely spoke a little bit too soon. By servers, you mean the company's administrative servers? <sighs> ah, oh, oh yeah. Thanks to my misty consciousness, I'd forgotten something that basic. I felt like I discovered a single ray of hope in the midst of disaster, or mists of despair. Just what I'd expect from my wife. I regretted the loss of my precious Moe illustration collection and MP3s which I hadn't backed up, but I had no choice except to give them up, even so I wanted to begin reinstalling my OS as soon as I could. And I wanted to confirm the safety of my Ensu save data with my own eyes as soon as possible. Although before anything else happened, I needed the headache currently torturing me to subside. <laughs> But I very much doubted this pain would be, or would do me the favor of disappearing anytime soon. Okay. So. Yeah. This is going to be another shorter episode. There was still 11 minutes left on the clock, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we'd be waiting closer to 20 minutes before we reached another one of those transition points. So I'm actually going to go ahead and end the episode here. It's, as I said, it's ending a little bit earlier than I would have generally done so. Um, but yeah, as I said, we were probably looking at close to another 20 minutes before, and well... I've got some other things I need to go and record today, so I don't really have the time to go and record a, like, almost 50 minute part, I'm afraid. So, yeah, this episode's gonna be on the shorter end, and of course I apologize for that. But I will, at some point, try to figure out a way to make up for not only all the missed episodes, but these episodes that kind of get shorter just because of uh, me having other things to record. So, yeah. So I will see you guys next week, which is 
what, the 15th or something? Yes. No, wait, this goes up on the 15th. I will see you guys on the 22nd. Uh, but yeah. So I will see you guys next time, but until then, uh, goodbye and farewell.